everybody, welcome to the Gold Life. Look, we have a whole new studio. Look at how awesome this place is. I got this new hoodie too. It's awesome. My name is Perry, I'm an electrical engineer, and today we're gonna watch The Big Bang Theory to see how accurate the science and technology scenes in this TV show really are. Okay, here's the deal. Six months ago, my research testing the predicted composition of trans-Neptunian objects ran into a dead end. So? So, my visa's only good as long as I'm employed at the university, and when they find out I've got squat, they're going to cut me off. By the way, when I say squat, I mean diddly squat. <laughs> So part of the deal between a professor and a university is that if the professor is going to continue to do research there, there have to be some sort of results to show like all this money that the university is pouring into you. Like you've got to produce some sort of like paper or something to show what you've been doing with your time. And like one of the big reasons for that is because the university that he's working at owns like all the intellectual property that any, any professor, not just Rod, like any professor at any university who's doing research there, the university is actually owning all of like the discoveries they make and any sort of patents that might come out of those like research, the university owns all of that. So think about it from their perspective, right? Like they are pretty much lending you all of their equipment and resources and supercomputers and these like hundred thousand dollar machines and measuring apparatuses and your job is to use those so that you can conduct research so the university in turn can get something back. When a professor starts to do research at a university, part of the reason it's so hard to get that funding is because the university providing all that equipment and whatever the professor needs, they're taking all the risk. You know, like the, it's like if this professor's research doesn't actually go the way he or she wants it to go, then they haven't actually lost money. The university has still been paying them a salary. But if they don't produce anything, then it's the university who's lost a couple hundred thousand dollars in the process. So yeah, they want results because they're putting in a lot of money into you. It's actually the same reason why like musical artists don't actually own their own music. I'm not sure how I just related this to the current conversation, but I mean, here we go. Like I, I was listening on the radio how like Taylor Swift actually has like some sort of problem with like her the rights to her music being sold between labels and that's actually a very real thing it's like because if you're a musical artist and you're like recording something in a studio it's you don't own the right to that music because you're using all the equipment and production that the like label or the studio has provided to you so this is the exact same thing here it's like unless you own the label or the physicist owns the university uh all the work that you do is pretty much not yours like it's the rights of that are owned by somebody else and the reason is because they're taking all the risk i mean th that's more of like a business as aspect of things but that's pretty much why like professors are always sort of like in this mode of like we have to make something happen because <laughs> if you don't like the the university just might cut off your funding as shown here and you could lose your job wait what have you been doing for the past six months you know checking email <laughs> Updating my Facebook status. <laughs> messing up Wikipedia entries. <laughs> hey, did you know Netflix lets you stream movies on your computer now? And you've continued to take the university's money under false pretenses? Highly unethical for an astrophysicist. Okay, it's, it, it's one thing to say that you don't have like the results that you wanted, but if you just have nothing, like that's the worst situation to be in. Usually when a professor will write like a grant for a proposal, it sounds like we need X amount of dollars spread out over two years. Like you're not just given a check for like a hundred thousand or whatever it is you need for your um, like research to con continue. Your proposal is written such that like after two years or three years, you're gonna have this much done and this is where the money's actually going. If you don't actually have reach that goal, you can definitely say, hey, we got 65% of the way there or we got 80% of the way there. Like you gotta have something to show for what you've been doing all this time. And if it's been like two, three years and you don't have anything to show for it, well, I mean, yeah, you're pretty much never gonna get tenure. Then you, you might not get fired because that's a bit extreme, but y the, the next time you ask for money, you, you're certainly not gonna be on the top of the priority list for who gets funding for their research. Dr. Kutherbali, come on in. I was surprised to hear you were interested in joining our little team. Giving up on those trans-Neptunian objects, are we? <laughs> no, no, it's a very promising area. In a perfect world, I'd spend several more years on it. But I just couldn't pass up the opportunity to work with you on your tremendously exciting and not yet conclusively disproved hypothesis. <laughs> Splendid. Yeah, uh, 
this is just a really, really fancy and smart way of saying, no, I haven't given up on my current research, but I'm interested enough in yours to contribute some things so that my name can get on your paper. Like, notoriety is a huge deal when it comes to, like, any sort of, like, intellectual property. I mean, because think about it, like, if you're a physicist, right, like, your value as a physicist is going to be as high as your contribution to the field of science. It doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to give up on what it is you're currently working on, even though in this case it means exactly that you're going to give up on what you're working on because you don't have anything. But, um, you just have to pretty much get through it. Like, you can't tell a university, no, I have nothing to show for all the money that I've been here for. And if that means branching out and contributing to other people's research, even though your name isn't like the, the one in like big bold letters, you got to do what you got to do. You need to keep on contributing. Like, that's how you get further ahead. Serious research, which requires complete and utter focus. All right, let's buckle down and work. <laughs> yeah, like, what I've been saying in so many of these videos is that physicists love to think. Engineers love to do. But like, right here is exactly what I'm talking about. Like, if you're a physicist, especially a theoretical physicist, you love to stare at boards because, and I mean, it's not like a consequence of like, that's what you enjoy doing, but when you are at such a high level in what it is you're studying, like you're the guy who's inventing this new stuff. Like you are the person who's pretty much like the go-to for people who don't know what they're talking about. So. It's very difficult for someone like Sheldon, who's such who's such high up in his field, to ask for help, because it's like you know, like you already know everything that you're you're trying to accomplish. Like for you to actually build upon something, you have to understand what the base is first. And these people have a very firm understanding of what they're doing, and it's very difficult to branch out and ask other people for help. Whereas if you are an engineer, it's not as difficult because you can always go to like a manager or a senior engineer and say hey like I'm not actually sure how this works but has something like this been done in the past and I can almost promise you 99.99% of the time whatever the question is you are asking it has been done sometime in the past right you're making a slight modification to it however when theoretical physicists are working on their research it hasn't been done before and you are the guy who's writing all the new formulas and creating all these new like discover like there's just no one for you to go to for help so a lot of this stuff is just sitting there and it looks like they're doing nothing but they are actually thinking about what their next move is going to be okay you got me there but you're wrong about this <laughs> there's a fine line between wrong and visionary unfortunately you have to be a visionary to see it <laughs> You think that every thought that comes out of your head is pure gold. Well, let me tell you something. Some of those thoughts are pure caca. The caca? It means doo-doo. All right. I think that this is just a consequence of having two extremely intelligent human beings in the same room together. This is basically inevitable. You would think when you put two very intelligent like people in the same room that there'd be a whole lot of productivity that comes out of that room. That's not always the case. The majority of what goes on is one guy, like in this case Sheldon would be the one who's like, hey, can we do this? And then Raj would be the one who's like, well, we can't because of that. And he would say, well, how about this idea? No. Well, what about that? Probably not, and here's why. In any sort of dynamic like this, you always have one dude who's always proposing a bunch of questions, and the second one will be playing devil's advocate as to why most of these propositions will not work. Not to mention, professors in general, like, they hate, I mean, they hate to be told that they're wrong. It's somehow attacking who they are inside as a human being. You might as well just say that, like, everything you've done to this point in life is a lie. Like, they, they hate being told that they're incorrect. But it's even worse if you have one of your colleagues tell you that. Especially when you've been doing all this research and, like, one guy who's brand new to the project comes along and he's like, yeah, actually, I know what you've been doing wrong this whole time. Like, as much as you want to, like, rejoice and be happy for that person, so much of it is just built up frustration because it's like, man, I've been at this for, like, so long and I haven't been able to come up with a solution that this person who just walked in recently, like, instantly saw. Also, like, looking at all the boards that he has in that room, they're not all related to each other. Like, one of them says, like, mineshaft, 
and height like I don't know what that has to do with this and also on that same board like underneath it that that is a classic electrical engineering exam question like they're gonna give you that exact circuit because I think I've had that like on three exams and a couple different class like that exact circuit has shown up multiple times and what you would use that for that's an op amp and it pretty much has resistors organized in such a way that you to, you're required to analyze it like the most efficiently way to analyze this thing is like a four step method but yeah like that exact circuit is used everywhere because that's like one of the basis of a transistor like it, eventually you're going to start to learn about how those things work and then you get to mosfets and jfets and this is like that that right there is like the basis of many of these transistors that you're using today thank you guys so much for watching i really hope you enjoyed that video let me know what you think of the studio man because it's really really cool and I, I i really love this whole new look that like my sister helped me set this up and it it is incredible like, i'm really geeking out how awesome this whole place is I hope you enjoyed the video as well, and if you did, just go ahead and give me a thumbs up or a comment down below. Like, let me know if there's anything else you wanted to know from this episode, or any further episodes, or TV shows, movies in general that you'd like me to watch and commentate over. Thank you guys again for watching, stay fresh, and stay golden.